But now I want to get into a bunch of other random topics that are still kind of in the the under the umbrella of Christendom, if you will. The first right. thing is manhood in the church and manhood in culture. So I think that churches in in modern church they do this thing. It's kind of a trick where they pretend that they care about the men by doing men's programming. So once a year, they'll do like a man thing where they'll get together and eat chili and, you know, deer meat or something like that. And they bring in some speaker and they kind of do that thing, which those things are fine. You know, they, they do this programming thing. But for the other days of the year, the church is not man friendly. Whenever they're singing the songs, whenever they're listening to the pastor, whenever they're doing things, it's all, as if the church is communicating to them, hey, this is it for you. We didn't have you in mind when we did this. We just assumed you would show up and just deal with it. The majority of Christian books are consumed by women. The overwhelming majority of Christian music is consumed by women. And so I think that's created an issue. And here we are in this point in culture where we can't even tell you what a man is. We can't even tell you what a woman is. And we can say, depending upon what you ate that morning, you might think you're the other thing. And so talk in general about yourself, because here you are, you got a bunch of damn animals behind you. You kind of, you know, check some of the typical man boxes, but talk to me about manhood in the church and in culture. Yeah, man, you're right. I mean, from the empty tomb until today, women have been holding it down in the church, you know? Um, and I think for a long time, this is going to get me in, would get me in a ton of trouble depending on the circles, but I've told our church for a long time, man, that church is like a shirt. You realize this? Church is like a shirt. Um, I can put on my shirt. I look fine. My wife can put on my shirt. She looks great. All right. My wife can put on a blouse. She looks fine. I put on a blouse. Something's weird. Yeah, right. The church has been like a blouse for the last hundred years. It is. It only fits women. So here at 1122, we're a movement for all people. But let me tell you, bro, I, I don't target men. I disciple men. That's the difference. Chili ain't ever done anything. I'm pro chili, man. I, I kill <laughs> deer all the time. I last time I bought red meat, I have no idea when that is. So I do all the things. I'm I'm a redneck. I hunt. I fish. I got more guns than I have fingers. I got one on me right now. I drive a four wheel drive truck. I like college football. None of that makes me a man. It makes me awesome, but it does not make me a man. <laughs> According to the Bible, well, first of all, I will tell you this: an attack on gender is an attack on the character and nature of God. Make no bones about it, man. We're not just talking about legalities and trying to make people feel comfortable or whatever, bro. This an attack on gender is an attack on the character and nature of God. Male and female, he created them so that we could both image him rightly. And so, um, man, we disciple men. I mean, it's what we do here at this church. And you can't stand up and act like men until you first and foremost bend your knee to the God-man, Jesus Christ. And in creation, you see that God gave every single man a woman to love, a will to obey, and work to enjoy. And then the enemy comes along and twists all three of those things. And so typically the response is one of two extremes, and both of them are bad. One is you get into this like machismo where you beat your chest and you just try to out drink people or out arm wrestle or whatever, you know, prove yourself that you're a man by what you consume. And dude, men don't take, men give, men serve, right? Or you go really the way of the church and you just feminize everybody. And, and part of the reason the church has failed with men for so long is they ask men to be women. Just come in here, sit down, be quiet, be nice, put on a robe, get in groups, talk about your feelings. Well, I'm not doing that either, man. It's partly why we planted this church, because you do not have to check your testicles at the door to follow after Jesus. In fact, you can't rightly follow after Jesus as a man if you do check him at the door. That you got to grow a pair, stand up and act like a man, and be the man that God has called us to be. But the reason God has given us strength, the reason God has called us to be men is to be prophet to be priest, to be servant king, to be provider and protector for those that he has put around us. That's what Christ has called men to do.